Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and we're continuing our Expedition Guide series for Total War Troy's upcoming Mythos DLC with the Cerberus Expedition Guide. So last time we took a look at the Griffin Patriarch, and this time we'll do something very similar for the hunt for Cerberus. So for all three mythical creatures in the upcoming DLC, the hunt will start on turn 15, and every two turns you have an event. And the first event you're going to see after you start the hunt is Illusina. And the path towards Eleusina's holy ground is where your hunt for the Hound of Hell first takes you. Red poppy blooms float at your feet as though disembodied from their stock. Young women fill baskets with them. Your guide, a young Eleusian priest named Thersiros, tells you that Demeter herself made the flowers grow under her feet on her journey from Crete to Eleusia, a last desperate resort to lead her daughter to her. Persephone loved poppies and painted them with special care. Their milk gives sleep and solace, Cicero says, even final solace, for some who needs it. At the threshold of their temple, the pale Elysian priests in their dark blue robes are waiting. And with this, we get four choices. Initiates in the mysteries, train with the Elysian warriors, sacrifice to the mysteries, or recruit from among the Illusions. So all of these four choices, the first one here, in initiate in the mystery, is vitally important in the Cerberus questline. This has the most impact on your later choices and oftentimes can be the only correct choice off the four here, unless you're going for max recruitment, as you're gonna see why. So with this choice, you get something called the Illusion Initiate. You're gonna initiate all your warriors as part of this culture, and you get plus melee defense for all your units, but you lose morale because you're embracing this new mysterious cult, basically. And this will come into play because if you don't get initiated to their cultural um, sacrifice and rituals, you can't do a lot of the actions later on. So you're now into the mysteries or what they like to call it. And the second choice here, train with Illusion Warriors, will obviously increase the power of your force. They will become tired. You have your first unit in your army lose 30% of their health, and the entire army will gain plus four ranks. This sounds super attractive, and you might think this is the way to go if you want to use your expedition as a training opportunity to bring out the max rank. But actually, the max rank route, which we'll cover at the end, will not require this one. Actually still require the first one because there's such good ones with the mysteries and the initiated that you need to get that one first or else you're locked out from all those branches later on. And moving on to the third option, we have sacrifice to the mysteries. This is some sort of ritual that we don't understand but we're sacrificing regardless. We pick up a feast which gives our army morale and fatigue reduction and we get plus one rank. And so far, this one might sound like the best one because it has no negative penalties, unlike the first two. But really, these bonuses are super minor. And if we move on to the fourth and last option, this is recruiting from them. And this one will give you two shielded spearmen. So if you're going for the max recruit route where you want to bring back the most units, this is a decent choice. And these spearmen are not like the standard shielded spearmen. They also have battlefield regeneration on them, as you can see from the second icon, and they can also swap out their spear and shield with two-handed spear. So it's not a bad unit, of course, but probably not as good after you see what you can do after you become an initiate. So moving on two turns later, we'll get to the second event, which is called Teniron. It is Thirsty Rose, the young priest who told you your next destination, Tantoron. He is also unwavering in his intention to come with you, and so he is by your side when you finally arrive one late afternoon. It is a massive cave, set in a cliff pockmarked by sand and wind. The sea should be close, but Poseidon lost this place to Hades a long time ago, and you can't hear the surf, only your warrior's uneven breathing as you stand at the edge of a petrified grove and look upon a scene of recent carnage. Humans and giants both, a battle. Finally, from behind a clump of rocks at the far end of the killing field, the rumble of powerful voices. What now? So with this, we have, once again, four choices. 
we can reveal ourselves to the survivors. Stay out of sight, camp for the night. Stay out of sight, then ransack the dead. Or stay out of sight, then honor and burn the dead. The fourth option here can only be done if you became initiated and thus understand the custom of burning the dead, or else you cannot do this one. So right away we get a lockout if we didn't go with the first option in the very first event. But let's start from the beginning here. If we show ourselves to the survivors, what we will see is that the survivors are wounded giants, and they are giant bowmen and a giant champion, and they will join your party. Even though they say they're wounded, they have full health, and the only thing that's missing is a bit of morale and some increased fatigue. So you get two additional units. Of course, if you're going for the maximum recruitment route, this would be your option. Then moving on, you can go with the second option by just staying out of sight and camp for the night. This is your way to rest up. You get the camping trait, which is 20% additional morale for all units and more fatigue resistance. And you get a respite, which will recover any single negative effect you might have picked up from your first round and plus one more rank for your units. Not bad if you think you got the negative trait uh, in the first round that you want to get rid of. There's not that many of them. There's only the first two events that had some negatives, and one of them is a health negative. So unless you really want to balance out like one negative trait, which is either a fatigue hit or a 10% morale hit, depending on whether you went with the first or second event. It's not a big deal. And then the third option here, stay out of sight, then ransack the dead. And this one will give you quality weapons. So you get 30% missile damage for all units in the army, 30% to armor for all units, and 30% to melee, 30 points to melee damage for all units. Not a bad boost, but as you will see very soon, there are going to be repercussions for you to ransack the dead. So just be careful if you pick this one, there is an option down the line that you will want to avoid. Moving on to the fourth option here is stay out of sight, but then honor and burn the dead. In this case, you are actually performing the rituals, you must be initiated to do this, and you get something called peace of mind. Increased morale for all units, increased damage resistance for all units by 20%, also a very good boost and plus one rank to your units as well. So this is probably the best case scenario, especially if you did end up going with uh, the initiation in the first one and there's going to be a positive outcome for you to honor the dead later on as opposed to ramsacking the dead now all of this is built on the fact that you don't go for those giants because the first choice is get giants and then the remaining three is all stay out of sight but first one is camping second one's ramsacking and this third one is honoring and burning the dead and moving on two turns later we'll have the lake the way in is surprisingly wide the rocks are riddled with glowing patches, sporadic glimmerings and flittings, squeaking shadows. Thistials tell you that the dead who pass through here, not knowing they have died, shed their mortal bodies step by step. Such material remnants then are turned to glittering rocks and glowing mosses. The bats overhead once were the flesh of slaves who thought sanctuary in the ancient temple of Poseidon, and who one day simply woke up and walked to the shores of the underground lake where Chiron waited. He finishes as the lake come into view. Grim silence follows until one of the men calls to another, Shedding parts, eh? You know what's the first thing you will, Silas, don't you? Your laughter races along the wide, empty waters, no Chiron, just a ruined temple at the other shore, and shades, waiting. Your laughter dies. So Silo seems to be a reoccurring character in the party uh, for all these stories, and we see him here. And the choices here have only three options. Go to this temple, approach a stone altar near the cave entrance, and wander the lake. There are a lot of restrictions on these. Going to the temple requires that you have the giants, because it says the giants are interested in this. If you don't have the giants, you can't go to the temple. Approaching a stone altar near the cave entrance require you to be initiated. So if you didn't pick that first option on the first event, you also can't pick that one. So most of the time, if you didn't go with those certain options, you have to pick Wonder the Lake, which has three different outcomes depending on what you picked in the second event. This is where honoring the dead actually matters. So we'll still go with the first option, which requires the giants. Go to the temple. 
And in this case, we're going to get a nice bonus to all our units in the army against enemy mythic units, 50 points of melee damage, very similar to the trade ship event from the Griffin quest line, and also plus two ranks. So this is the benefit of going with the giants from the second event. And then moving on to our second option, approaching a stone altar. This requires us to be initiated. And from this one, we pick up our item, which is the Molly Flower. It grants 15% damage resistance for the hero carrying it. It's not a bad bonus, and you can keep it if you don't give it away, much like pseudos. And your units will have gained experience, two ranks here. So also pretty decent. And then we come to this branching third choice called Wonder the Lakes. And if you went with the giants or camping in the previous turn, you end up with the standard outcome of the Island of Butterflies. It will improve the morale for all units, but decrease their melee attack by 10%. You also get plus one rank. That's not too bad. If you ransack the dead bodies, they will turn into shades that will curse you by dropping your morale by 15% and minus 15 to melee attack. This is where you could get into trouble. If you didn't go with the initiation in the first turn and then ramsack on your second turn, once you get here, your only choice is Wonder the Lake because you don't have giants and you are not initiate. So you're forced to get this penalty. And this is where you might get into trouble for picking that very nice quality weapon buff from turn two. And you still get plus one rank here. And if you honor the dead and burn their bodies, you get very thankful shade, gratitude of shade. They will upgrade your peace of mind that you picked up for burning their bodies, which is a 30% boost to morale and 20% boost to damage, into something called the gratitude of the shades, which is a 40% boost for both of those things. So you lose peace of mind, which you gain from burning them. And now you have the gratitude version and you get plus two ranks here. So you actually do get a small bonus compared to the other two options, which are only plus one rank. So a little bit of special bonus added for honoring their dead. And the 40% damage resistance, very good for all units in the army. And in two turns, you get the fourth event, which is Circe's, the island at the very center of the world, or so Circe's tells you. Colors so sharp as to make your eyes sting and butterflies everywhere coming together and breaking apart in erratic, shifting clumps. Cersei's palace is not difficult to find, despite the profuse, nagging growth all around you. You catch a boar along the way, which gives in to your spears almost without resistance. You only look into its face once, then something makes you alert your eyes. Cersei's herself greet you at the gate surrounded by her ninads, all in full regalia. You and your men can barely speak but Thersios managed to introduce you. Oh, hello, young death priest, is it? How droll. And mighty warriors, oh my. And where's Odysseus? All right, that comes later, does it not? Come in, come in, and leave this to the cook. Poor thing, he just wanted to be free. And as we meet her, we get four choices once again. Allow men in her service. Give her the molly flower, requiring us to have become initiated, and also wander to the altar in the last event. So two requirements here to pick up the Molly Flower, and now we have to give it up. We can claim pure hearts, which also require us to be initiated. So many requirements that require that first one. Or spend a night with Circe's Nanet. So we'll look at these one by one, starting with allow man into her service. We'll be giving up two of our weakest units, and we'll gain two sirens back. And we also gain two ranks of experience for all the units that we still have. Not a bad trade-off if you have bad units. The sirens are quite nice in Mythos. Flying units are a new thing that are range as well, so they can fly and shoot down at poor innocent melee units on the ground. Then with our second choice, giving up the Molly Flower, we say goodbye to the item that can give 15% damage resistance for our generals, but we get the blessing from her which is 40% to missile damage for all our units in case we're bringing a lot of missile units. But for our melee units, we also get 40 points of melee damage. We also get a respite to erase any potential negative effect, one single one, and three ranks. Not a bad trade if you're concerned about the upcoming battle against Cerberus. 
Then in our third option, Claim Pure Hearts, you get the bonus that is super amazing. 100% to melee defense for all units. It's not a typo. It could be a bug or an oversight by the developers because we're still in alpha. It could just be 10%, but that seems very little. I double checked. It's 100% to melee defense for all units, which is insane. And 20% additional damage resistance to all units. So if we went with Honor the Dead and got the gratitude from the shades, you're looking at 60% damage resistance and 100% to melee defense by this point, which is just nuts. And you also get a respite on top of that, but no more rank up for your army. Not that they need it with this much defense. Then with the final choice, which is spending a night with the lovely ladies, you end up with 30% boost to melee defense for all units, which is nice, but nothing like claiming pure hearts. 20% to morale for this army and 30 points to melee attack. Your first unit will suffer a little bit of damage, 30% health for just that first unit, which often is your giant unit or your uh, acquired unit because those will go into the first slot, whether that's the spearmen or the giants, and you gain plus two rank. So not a bad outcome here. If you didn't get initiated, this might be the option you go for because the bonus is still quite nice. But as you can see what I mean, the initiation is really the only right choice in that first event chain. Then moving on to our final one, we have Hades. Cersei's directions are extremely simple. Follow Helio in his western descent. She told you she would take care so that he leads you where you want. After just a single day of sailing where the air is filled with strange lights and the sea's color shifts more and more from water to wine, your feet touches the shores of Hades. You look to your side and see Cersei Rose. You look again and he's another. He holds a curved staff and from his feet trail fluttering wisps of light, faintly wing-like. Lord, he laughs, the Lord is my father. I'm just the messenger. Though don't tell that to the one who is coming. The air thickens, a terrible weight Pain suddenly in your chest. The ground loses solidarity, as if you suddenly stand on a gigantic palm under the terrible regards of something you can't quite see. It waits. Speak. And we get three final choices here. The hero stay in Hades, the giant stay in Hades, and a final mystery. So here's where things are a little bit misleading, or perhaps a development of alpha build. Because the first choice here implies that the general you sent will stay here with Hades after the final battle. He will fight Cerberus and will not return to you. And you get something called Final Destination, increasing battle speed of the hero unit, missile damage of the hero unit, and the hero becomes unbreakable and also extra attacks for him. So basically a nice boost as his last battle comes upon him. But actually, the game mechanic is not implemented in the actual game. He comes back to you after the battle, even if you choose this, which is probably unintended. So it might get fixed, but I also question how will it get fixed because you cannot have armies without generals in Troy. So if you keep the general, then technically you lose the whole army, which also doesn't make sense. So it's a little bit weird here, but right now this is the safe choice to pick where you lose nothing. So. Go with this, especially if you didn't get the initiation, because the third and final choice here require you to be initiated, as every single event so far has something cool that requires that. Then moving on to the second choice, the giant state in Hades. This require you to have the giants. If you didn't go for the giants in event two, you don't have this option, obviously. And in this case, the two giants will actually be lost right away. They will not be part of the final fight. You gain something called Resolve, which increases missile damage for all units in your army and also melee damage as well, 40% for both. You get plus four ranks only to your first two units, which is really, really weird and something that I have brought up with the developers to check if it's intended for this or not, or it's something that should be granted to all your units, but it's just miscoded. So perhaps we'll see plus four to all units on the launch copy. Then moving on to our final option, a final mystery. You can't enjoy mysteries unless you've been initiated to the mysteries. So once again, require you to pick initiation on the first event. But if you pick that, 
the bonuses are once again outstanding. You get something called clarity. All your units now become unbreakable and increase fatigue to them. So they become tired, but they're unbreakable, which I think is a great trade. And then look at the next one, plus five rank. So early on in that first event where we worried about whether you want max rank, should you go for the training with plus four rank or go for the initiation, which gives no rank up? Well, here's your answer. If you want to go max rank, you have to go initiation because you get this plus five rank as your last event. So this is really, really nice. Also, Unbreakable is just outstanding, especially since you're fighting a lot of Shades in the last battle who are also Unbreakable. So you'd be evening the grounds. Even your worst unit can kind of match the Shades once you become Unbreakable. So those are going to be all your options for the Cerberus Expedition. Now we're going to look at some of the recommended path for getting the most out of the Expedition, whether that's max rank or max recruitment both things you can bring out from the expedition. And the only item you can really get from this one is the Molly Flower. You have to first pick it up, which required the early initiation, and also not giving it away once you do meet Cersei's. So that's the only item that makes a difference. Not really gonna recommend a path for that one. Uh, in terms of max rank up, as we mentioned, go with initiation in the first one, uh, which doesn't give you much, no rank up here. Then stay out of sight and honor the dead giving you plus one rank for doing that. And then the next step, you go to the lake and the shades will reward you with plus two rank, bringing your total to plus three rank along with other bonuses. Then you would want to spend the night with Cersei's girls as it will give you another plus two rank, bring your total to five before finally embracing a final mystery, ranking yourself up to plus 10, which is max rank. So in this case, you'll bring in an excellent army for your expedition have them rank up very nicely during this whole process, and they'll come back an elite fighting force for the rest of your campaign. Then moving on to the max recruitment, there's actually not that many units you can get on this trip, but some of the good ones are these shielded spearmen with the regeneration, which is quite different from their regular counterpart in the main campaign. You will pick recruit among the Eleusians in the first one. And then in the second step, you want to reveal yourself to the survivors to pick up the giants. And then after that, it doesn't matter what you do, but I prefer to go to the temple since you have the giants anyways. And then the next step, you allow men into her service, which sacrifices two of your weakest unit, which are two units you bring, but you get to trade that for two sirens. So it's not a net gain of unit, but it's perhaps an upgrade of units. And then finally, you can go with the hero stays in the shade so you don't give up the two giant bowmen. And since you didn't get the initiation, this is the only choice you can do. You cannot do a final mystery. So you end up with six new units, but you lose two of your weakest unit along the way. So that's the best way to get the maximum recruitment from the Cerberus quest line. And that's going to do it. Um, highly recommend the max rank one because the initiation just opens up so many positive outcomes. The tricks here are getting initiated getting the honor, uh, the bodies, and burn them, and then go to the lake, pick up more bonuses, and get the final mystery, and you'll be set uh, to battle the final uh, Cerberus fight, becoming unbreakable, close to 60% uh, damage resistance, plus 100%, you know, melee defense. It's insane. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this guide, and we'll see you guys in a few days for the final Hydro Guide. Until then, bye!